Hey everybody, how's it going? So in this video, I wanted to start a little mini-series in regards to a little bit more to do with software engineering principles and not so much about code itself. And the first thing that I wanted to attack was the solid principles. Now, if you've been coding for a long time, I'm sure you've heard of what the solid principles are. But a lot of you may not know everything about them, okay? So in the next few videos I'm going to upload, I'm going to cover each of the principles that are associated with the solid principles. And there's actually five of them. So I've got them listed here in front of me. The first one which we'll be covering is the single responsibility principle. Then we have the open and close principle. Then the Liskov substitution principle. The interface segregation principle. And then finally, the dependency inversion principle. So in this video, we're going to look at the first one, which is the single responsibility principle. Now, what I'm looking at the moment is actually an article on LinkedIn, which I wrote. So if you want to follow me on LinkedIn and take a read of this, I'm happy for you to do so. And I can see here in a, f a few lines, I've basically described here what the single responsibility principle is, okay, without really using any code. However, what I thought I'd do in this video was I would demonstrate the same knowledge here, but using code. Now, the idea I'm going to be using is Visual Studio on the Mac, so I'll be writing code in C Sharp. So let's get started on that. So if you look in front of you right now, you'll see a pretty standard program written in C Sharp for a console application. So I've got a program class, and inside of that class I have a static void main, and then I have a, a little bit of logic here and then a console output and obviously a console read line so we can see what's going on that comes to the screen without the console actually closing, okay? That's just something I've always done and I just force have to do it here. Now I have another C sharp file which is what my example is going to be about. And basically what I've chosen to do in my first example here is think of a report generator. So if you think about generating reports in your application, there's two things that you kind of need to do in order to generate those reports, right? The first thing is you need to get the data that is required for the report. So that will come from some data source somewhere. Uh, it could be a database, it could be a NoSQL, it could be cache, whatever, right? And then the second part is you'll try to format it into a particular format and return that information to whoever's calling it, okay? So what I've got here in front of me is I've decided to basically mock up my data source for this example easily just using a standard list with a class called a report entry. Now report entry just has two properties, a column one property and a column two property. The data doesn't really matter at this point. It's just a matter of demonstrating that there's some kind of an object that will be used to represent the entries inside of this report, okay? Then I have this function called generate report as string, and all it does is emulate the situation of adding data to a list, and then converting that data into, in this case, JSON, right? And returning it as a string. And then basically back in my program, I've got the output coming out here from the call, all right? Now, looking at this, I already see two major issues, all right? And basically, the two major issues I see is that firstly, we're keeping this uh, class here private. So this report thing is unknown outside of this class. Right, so if anyone wanted to generate uh, the data for this report generator, they couldn't do so at this point because the model that's needed for the generator to actually generate the report is kept inside the, the generator. So the first thing I'm going to take to give this report generator a single responsibility is to abstract away this report entry into its own file. So let's do that. So I'm gonna come over to the solution and I'm just gonna add directly underneath the project for the moment, a new item. So I'm gonna add new file, 
and I'm going to call it exactly what it's called there, which is report entry. And save. We'll click new here. And now we've got this new report entry class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just jump back to my generator, grab the two properties that are in here, copy that, and paste them in here. So get rid of the constructor. And we've got ourselves a report entry class now that can be utilized by other classes within this program. So with that said, we can now delete this class. Now, references are all okay because we're in the same directory and therefore in the same namespace. Now, the second one, the most important one here, is that for the single responsibility to work, we really need this generator to have one responsibility. Right now, it has, well, you could say three, but it definitely has two. So it has the it's having the ability of generating the data and then it's having the ability to format that data and return it, okay? So what we really want this to do is we just want to be able to say, you know, here is a generator class that will allow someone to specify what is needed or where the data source is gonna be, right? And how to format it without it being tied directly to the function itself here, right? So therefore, getting the data and formatting it are two dependencies of this class, right? So I'm gonna create two classes to model this behavior. So let's start off with the, the data that we're trying to fetch here. Let's model this as a, let's say, a, we'll say a data provider, okay? So I'm gonna come back over and we'll go to the solution. I'm gonna add another class here. So once again, add new file. And I'm gonna call it a data provider. Right. Now I could call this a SQL data provider or whatever it is. I'm just at this point going to call it a data provider. Now this data provider will provide a method such as uh, let's say public, and we want to return though that list of report entries, right? Report entry, and we'll say just get data, right? So this is the method we want to implement, and also just to make this work, I need to add a using statement for system dot collections dot generic. That's just to get that generic list working. And basically this data provider will be the thing that will pass in that list that we have in the report generator here. So now I can get rid of this and essentially I can get rid of all this. Like so. Save, come over to the data provider, paste it, update the constructor name, all right? And we've kind of got the same thing. And then inside of this get data section, we can grab the code that's on this first line here, right? And cut that out, right? And when I come back to the data provider, I can add that to this part here. Okay. So get data expects us to return this. So I'm just gonna go return entries so what we've done here is now we have this data provider that has one single responsibility which is to get the data that will be needed to generate the report okay the report now just needs to understand where to get that data from so what i'm going to do for the purpose of this example is i'm going to create my own version of that particular provider so Private read only data provider data provider equals new data provider. Oops. And now I can just go the entries equals data provider dot get data. Oops. Like so. 
and then I'll just change this to get the entries all right now that's taken away one responsibility of the report generator class but we still have this dependency of formatting the data once it's returned from the data provider now we know that potentially in the future we may want to format other or we may have, have different other format types that we want for this report generator but at the moment we're tied directly to a json version because we're trying to format data in this class when this class really shouldn't be focusing on that task it should be focusing on just getting the data and then using a data provider and then calling the convert or a formatter to format that data and return it as a string okay that's all this method is meant to do so with that in mind i'm now going to write another class that will perform this serialized object conversion passing in this list right and return a string right and that will essentially tie up what we need to do here so coming back over to my solution i'm going to create another file or another class i should say new file and we're going to call it let's call it a json formatter because that's essentially what it is and we'll click new and now that we've got this we're literally going to take the information that we had in the report generator and we're going to bring that over okay so i'm going to copy that for the moment I'm gonna create a function here or a method that will return a string and we can just put for the JSON format out I'm just gonna put format object as string and then I know at this point I'm just gonna be dealing with a list of uh, what do we call it um, report entries I might call it a JSON report formatter because it's, de it's dealing directly with a report. And my mouse is playing up a little bit here. Just give me a moment. I'm going to have to pause the video. Okay, back. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just having some issues with my mouse there. So I'm going to rename this actually. I'm not going to call it format object as string. I'm going to format entries as JSON string. Or I'll just say as string because it's already a formatter. All right. And we've got the report entries. And then we're just going to grab that code that we had before. We paste it. And we're going to return this. Uh, first, we'll use the the JSON convert. Now, JSON convert comes from a NuGet package called Intsoft.json. So anyone who's done C Sharp would hopefully know that. Uh, report entries like so. And the last thing I forgot to do here is basically bring in the generic list. And I'll remove the system because we're not using it. And we can remove the constructor as well because we do not need it. Right, so now we can see this formatter here is basically responsible for taking that list of report entries and then returning a string. Okay, so that's another class that has one single responsibility, like the data provider that has one single responsibility of returning the data, and now the generator has one single responsibility, which is to just generate a report, right. And in this case, the report will be based on this data provider and what I'm about to write now, which is the JSON uh, report formatter. New JSON report formatter. All right. And now I can come in and I can go 
So our format entries as string, passing in the entries we have above. All right, and now this generate report as string now only has the responsibility of just doing simply that, grabbing two different dependencies and then just returning the string, right? So in future, what this, what this will do is when we go through the other principles, we will actually improve this a little bit, but this report generator will still only really deal with the one task, which is get the data from the provider and then call, make sure that the formatter formats that data and returns it. Right? So this is essentially what this single responsibility is all about. Uh, I'm going to run this program just to make sure it works as intended. So if I now run this and come over to a console app here. Taking a little bit of time, but as you can see now, as I'll resize this a bit, you'll see now we're getting that data from the data provider and it's being displayed on the screen using that JSON formatter. All right, so once again, let's take one more look at the code. We have a main here, which instantiates this thing called a report generator. This report generator has a method on it called generate report as string. This doesn't know anything about how it's getting the data or how it's formatted, which is totally cool. The report generator itself has one method in it, which only has to know about how to get the data using the data provider and how to format it using the formatter, okay? So that's the one responsibility it has. The data provider itself, right? It has one responsibility, which is to basically be the store and to get the data when asked to do so, right? So that's its responsibility. The JSON report formatter, which I need to rename this file, you know, has one responsibility and that is to take the data that comes in from the provider and serialize it as JSON and return it, okay? So again, another single responsibility. And lastly, you've got the class which represents the data. So the responsibility of this is just to hold information regarding an entry in the report, okay? So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will look to improve this uh, particular project and the stuff within it with regards to the open and close principle. So I'll see you in the next video.